You're listening to Trax FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at traxfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Trax FM Official. Hello, welcome back. And uh, you're currently listening to Trax. My name is KG, and as usual, on a Monday morning, it is half on Trax, 11.15 as per usual. Today we are talking about generic versus innovative medicine, and our guest today is Ms. Florence Chua Su Yin, who is a pharmacist with the New Drug Section at the Center of Product and Cosmetic Evaluation, National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency, NPRA. Right here, that is what's happening. So we are also on Facebook Live. If you've got any questions, there is pertinent to the interview today you might put it up and uh, we can see if we can answer it right well anyways welcome to the studio uh florence how are you today i'm good how are you i'm doing very well thank you as per usual and uh you know what let's get on with the questions because i think there is a lot to talk mm-hmm. about today yeah. now we'll start off with uh, this statement medicines are substances used to prevent control or treat diseases there are t- two types of medicines sold in the market um, branded or sometimes called innovators and the other called generic medicine. What do these terms mean? What are the similarities and differences between generic and innovator medicines? Right, so innovator medicines are the original branded medicines that is first sold in the market. Mm-hmm. So these innovator medicines are patented by the company that discovered the new medicines after undergoing various clinical research and studies. Mm-hmm. So other pharmaceutical ph- manufacturers are not permitted to manufacture the same medicines during the patent period mm-hmm. until the patent expires. Mm-hmm. And that may last about 20 years or more. Mm-hmm. Yep. So generic medicines, what is that? That's on um, medicines that have the same active ingredients as the innovators ah. and are marketed after the patent period has expired. Mm-hmm. So as copy of the innovators, um, generic medicines exert the same pharmacological effects as the innovators. Okay, similarly, the dosage, the mode of administration, the action of the medicines, as well as the therapeutic effect mm-hmm. and the side effects of these generic medicines are also the same as the innovators. Mm-hmm. However, depending on the manufacturer, um, generic medicines will be given different brand names. Okay, so according to our local regulations for drugs, um, all generic medicines must be registered with the Drug Control Authority, DCA, mm-hmm. um, Ministry of Health, before they can be manufactured, imported, marketed, and used in Malaysia. So only medicines that have been proven to be safe, of high quality and effective through the evaluation processes can be registered by the Ministry of Health, DCA. Mm-hmm. So in terms of safety, Quality, efficacy, the registered generic medicines are actually equivalent to innovative medicines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the key criteria there being should be after the patent is done yes. and should be a different brand name. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just to add in a bit more. Uh, uh-huh. So it's like the due to variable formulation of generic medicines okay, by the manufacturing company. Um, these generics may have different inactive ingredients than the innovator. So for example, permitted colorings, flavorings, mm-hmm. preservatives, and certain substances for coating and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. All right. So, and what are some of the criteria that must be followed by the manufacturing company before uh, the so-called generic medicines can be registered by the Drug Control Authority? Okay. Since um, generic medicines contain the same active ingredients as the original branded ones, um, the DCA has established requirements to ensure that they adhere to safety, quality, and efficacy standards, which has been imposed on the original branded medicines. Mm -hmm. So Malaysia has a high quality international standard pharmaceutical regulation system. Strict registration standards have been imposed on generic medicines in order to ensure that all registered generic medicines meet the criteria of quality, safety and efficacy. Mm -hmm. So the key criterion here is to, uh, they have to fulfill manufacture of generic pharmaceuticals in adherence to good manufacturing practices. So Mm -hmm. GMP for sure. So yeah. there is a protocol already in place. Yes, that's for quality. So mm-hmm. in terms of like the sort of safety and efficacy, they have the bioequivalent studies. Mm-hmm. So that is also required for generic medicines. And we, we call it short for BE. Right? Mm-hmm. So these BE studies are carried out um, to demonstrate that the generic medicines can deliver the same therapeutic effect in the same amount of time as the original branded medicines. Mm-hmm. So the BE study is best approach. Um, sorry, it's the best approach for proving that the medicines are equally effective as the branded ones in treating patients. And this situation allows generic medicines to be interchangeable with the original branded medicines. Okay. Should mm-hmm. they are not, then they will not claim mm-hmm. you know, to be interchangeable. Mm-hmm. So there's that, that safety thing there. Mm-hmm. So th- the last point here is to say that DCA will also inspect um, in terms of formulation to guarantee that it does not contain any of the prohibited s- substances listed by the DCA. Mm-hmm. And it also enforces standards for process validation, um, so lab 
you know, quality validation, mm. labeling, and the finished product quality studies, as mm. well as stability. So they make sure that it's like, you know, stable mm -hmm. uh, as to what they claim. To, just to make sure that the quality and safety of these generic medicines are ensured. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and uh, the question about the gener generic medicines, mm -hmm. are they manufactured in a facility that would adhere to the same high standards as the original random medicine, otherwise also known as innovator? Yeah. So they are made in pharmaceutical facilities that comply with the same GMP requirements as the original branded ones um, before being registered. All generic medicines, whether made in Malaysia or imported from outside, must conform with GMP. And Malaysia has become a member of the Pharmaceutical Inspection Convention and Pharmaceutical Inspection Cooperation Scheme. Uh, we call it PICS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are like the standard use for either the innovator or generic medicines that is used in developed countries such as Australia, Europe and the US as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, quite a high criteria over there as yes. well. And uh, what we're going to do is, um, uh, Florence, we're going to be taking a very short break. And once we come back, uh, we'll be talking more about generic versus innovator medicine as well. So ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions, you can definitely ask them on our Facebook page and uh, we are currently looking at it as well. But of course, only pertinent and then we can answer it, right? So generic versus innovator medicine right here on Trax FM. We are talking to uh, Florence Chua Suyin, a pharmacist with the New Drug Section, Center for De uh, Product and Cosmetic Evaluation, National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency, NPRA, right here on Trax. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We are talking to Florence Florence Chua Su Yin, a pharmacist with the New Drug Section, Center of Product and Cosmetic Evaluation, NPRA. We are talking about generic versus innovative medicine. So this is something that is quite interesting because I just learned a couple of new things myself uh, talking in the background with Florence. And let's get on with the question, shall we? As we all know, strict requirements have been imposed by the DCA before generic medicines can be registered. Is there any monitoring done by the authorities after the generic medicine is already on the market? Um, definitely. So the DCA will guarantee that the generic medicines continue to meet the registration standards mm -hmm. in terms of quality, safety and efficacy through a market monitoring program called the surveillance activities. Mm -hmm. So to guarantee that um, it meets the registration criteria, their labelling and packaging will be reviewed and tested in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. okay, so apart from that, we have complaints received from health professionals, consumers and the public regarding the quality, safety or efficacy of generic medicines that will be investigated in detail. Okay, and um, when the source of problem has been identified, then the manufacturer will be um, responsible for implementing corrective and improvement measures. Mm -hmm. So every modification or alteration to the formulation, labeling or any other aspect of generic medicine during the registration period requires the DCA approval. So um, if should that be found to be of any of poor quality, unsafe or ineffectiveness and fail to comply due to the changes that they made, so the DCA may take action such as cancelling the registration of the medicine and for the safety of patients, then they will ask to um, issue orders to withdraw the medicine from the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so it is quite strict in Malaysia right now. Yes, so yes. especially if your generic medicines are already there and you decide to tamper with it, yeah. the authorities are going to be coming down on you. Yep, All right. Right, so what is the general perception amongst the consumers in Malaysia regarding the efficacy of generic medicines? Okay. So um, some people will think like they can compare medicines to products that resemble the original products, you mm -hmm. know, sort of cheap. Um, so they think that it's like of poor quality. For example, like fake handbags or fake watches. Uh -huh. it, it should be noted that generic medicines are not imitation medicines, okay? Because the active ingredient of the generic medicine is actually the same as the innovator <laughs> Mm -hmm. or original product. Okay, So the generic medicines can be offered at a lower cost simply because they do not have to bear the cost of research and development. Okay, They do not need to repeat ex you know, expensive clinical trials that was required um, by the new medicines um, company. They do not have to bear the cost of advertising, marketing, mm -hmm. promotion. So all these have been carried out by innovators previously during the patent period. Okay, So um, just another fact that is uh, it is not just one company that will apply to register and manufacture generic medicines after the patent. Okay, so um, there'll be one type of generic medicines may be produced like by several uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. So indirectly, this kind of creates an atmosphere of healthy mm -hmm. competition between the manufacturers of generic medicines, which will often lead to a decrease in the prices of the medicines in the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is uh, all can also be considered an act against monopoly. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you already said that, um, you know, uh, generic medicines are not of low quality. So now we'll tackle uh, some additional myths. Uh, some say that they might be counterfeit medicines. 
does that happen? And no less saying that it takes longer for genetic medicines to act in the body. Uh, in the body, are these rumors real or false? So, um, the question of you know quality, right, mm-hmm. and whether it's the same. So, like, um, we need to understand that for generic medicines to be allowed to be sold or marketed in the country, they must be registered with the MOH. Mm-hmm. So, this registration process is very detailed, and it has to meet various strict requirements. Okay. And the claim that generic medicines that take longer to act in the body is also untrue. Okay? On the other hand, the duration of action of the generic medicines in the body is the same as the innovator medicine because it has been proven in the bioequivalent studies that mm-hmm. I mentioned before. So these generic medicines will release the same dose of the active ingredient into the body at the same speed in, and in the same amount as the innovator medicine. All right. And um, when we talk about generic medicines, does it also include injections? Um, yes, it will. Mm-hmm. It will also include injections. So um, same, concept. same concept. Same concept. So anything not only orally can also be uh, injection or other kinds of administration methods as well. And uh, let's talk about identification and distinguishing of the real name of medicines. How can the public do this, uh, identify or distinguish the real name of the medicines and the trade name of the medicines? Okay, so I know many consumers are still confused about how, how to identify. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the generic name is like the chemical name or mm-hmm. the active ingredient okay, of the medicine that's used worldwide. Okay, so the trade name or the brand name is the one given by the pharmaceutical um, manufacturer and it differs. Mm-hmm. So you can say that's sort of like a, like a nickname. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so, um, so medicines, of course, they exert their intended use, um, you know, yeah, sorry, the intended effects when used as directed. So some may come in like the same shape and color, but actually have different names and mm-hmm. use. So this may confuse people easily as well. So therefore, the main point here is patients um, or consumers are un- encouraged to know the generic name of the medicines, okay, instead of the trade name. Okay, of the medicines, as well as the purpose of the medicine they are taking. So any type of medicine will only have one generic name, but will have multiple trade names. Okay? Um, so between manufacturers, there will of course be variations in the form and the color. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, so knowing the, the generic name is like, very crucial. Okay? And this can like, avoid taking the wrong medication or like, taking two of the same you know, active ingredients, mm-hmm. you know, but with just different brand names and colors. So one easy way to recognize the generic name or the real name of the medicine is to refer to the medicine's product label on the active ingredient information. So mm-hmm. look out for the active ingredient. Mm-hmm. Okay, the trade name or the brand name of the medicines is the name of the product, which will often be the nickname of the product. Okay, and generic medicines do not have the same trade name as the innovator medicines because the trade name of the you know, innovator has been copyrighted. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me give you an example. Panadol, okay, is an innovator medicine, and the active ingredient contained in Panadol is paracetamol. Okay. So after the patent of, for Panadol expired, so now Panadol is like the, the one who came up with it, developed, and they spent all their time and you know, research and all that. So once the patent has expired, then the um, generic companies, they started to come in and develop the same thing using the same active ingredient. But, um, and examples will be like Paracil, Euphomol, Actimol. Yeah. So it's the same active ingredient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so I think I've tried each and every one of that. <laughs> but right, so would there be impact of switching from brand name drugs to generic drugs? Um, usually, if there is like a big impact, it will actually state that it's not interchangeable. Mm-hmm. So that will be like made clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for those that allow to be switched, like the health professions are made aware as well. Yeah. Well, like which we can switch, which we can just you know swap around. Mm-hmm. So they are they everyone will be sort of aware of mm-hmm. what. So there are certain drugs that are very teri- very narrow therapeutic you know um, small changes. So these are like really highlighted and they will know not mm-hmm. to not to change it around. Mm-hmm. So those that are allowed to are actually mm-hmm. really okay. So things that is like paracetamol, I think that's pretty interchangeable. Yeah. But if it's something that is very, very specific, targeting a certain type of disease, then that yeah. might not be. Yeah, and that will be dealt by the doctor. So mm-hmm. they are very well aware of what can be change, interchangeable, what mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. All right, understood. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be taking another uh, short song break. Once we come back, there's still a couple more questions that we're going to be going through. And we are talking about generic versus innovative medicine on health on tracks today we will be right back welcome back to tracks and uh, you're currently with us on health on tracks generic versus innovative medicine and our guest today is uh 
Florence Chua Suyen, and she's a pharmacist with the NPRA. We've spoke a lot about innovator as well as brand name drugs as well as generic drugs. Now, the question is, I think a lot of people are thinking about this, are all brand drugs, branded drugs available in generic form? Um, unfortunately, not all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, So it will depend on... Um, how much the drug is needed, Mm -hmm. you know, how highly controlled that drug is, is there a quota of some sort. So like highly abused ones, the population is less, so they won't really bring generics Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those that um, like people will use, especially um, government hospitals, they will will make the effort Uh to bring the generics in because it's very expensive to take it on daily dose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. they will make that effort to bring that in. Yeah. So the ones that are truly needed, they will be there. Yes, yes they, will make, they will make the effort and they'll try and get people to, to bring in. Yeah, uh, make it available for yeah. the general public. Yes. And uh, of course, what can be concluded as a general message to the public about generic medicines? Like what is your opinion and what's your thoughts yeah. on this? So pretty much I'll be like wrapping up the whole session. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, medicines sold under a generic name are not counterfeit or imitations of brand name products. Okay, In terms of quality, safety and efficacy, generic medicines are actually equal mm-hmm. or bioequivalent to the original branded medicines. Okay, So generic medicines and original branded medicines, which we call innovators, are both manufactured in facilities that comply with the same um, good manufacturing practice standards. Okay, contrary to popular belief, innovator medicines are not always superior to generic ones. Mm-hmm. Generic medicines registered with the DCA of Malaysia are as good as their original innovators because they have fulfilled the requirements of being safe, mm-hmm. efficacious and um, of quality through bioequivalent studies. Mm-hmm. So generic medicines that have passed the BE study mm-hmm. should have equal therapeutic effects as their innovators. Mm-hmm. Okay, and generic medicines cost less then they are innovators, and this is often thought to be due to their sub- substandard quality. Yeah. But in actual fact, the reason generic medicines are less expensive is that the manufacturers of generic medicines do not have to invest in the research and development phase, mm-hmm. okay, which are usually performed for innovative medicines, which typically incurs the highest cost. Mm-hmm. So the availability of the same generic medicines from different manufacturers drives down the price due to price competition in the market. Mm-hmm. So in conclusion, there is an increasing demand for generic medicines worldwide. Okay, the availability of generic medicines that are therapeutically comparable to innovative medicines provides affordable medicines to consumers or patients and certainly reduces the healthcare costs. So um, for more information uh, related to generic medicines, um, please visit the official website of the National Pharmaceutical Re- Regulatory Agency, mm-hmm. NPRA, okay, at www.npra.gov.my or log on to Know Your Medicine portal at www.knowyourmedicine.gov.my mm-hmm. okay, and any further inquiries can also be made to the National Pharmacy Call Centre okay, um, at 1-800-88-6722 every Monday to Friday, 8am to 5pm. Except oh. public holidays. Yep, yeah. because they too need holidays. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I guess that is the end of our interview for today. An absolute eye opener, this one, because I didn't understand. Uh, I mean, I knew there was such a thing called generic as innovative medicines, but I didn't know about their, you know, separation, how they're separated and the such. And to know that they work just as well, I'm more than happy after this. I'll just get paracetamol rather than a branded one instead. Well, with that, I guess it's about time that we end for today. And uh, we spoke about generic versus innovative medicine with Florence Chua Su Yin and uh, pharmacist. Well, she's a pharmacist at the New Drug Section Center of Product and Cosmetic Evaluation at the NPRA. We are going to be back. In a bit, don't go anywhere. You're listening to Trax FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at traxfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Trax FM Official.